Hello and welcome to Word Live. What does the future hold for Afghanistan? Should the US leave sooner or later, given the uh, height of anti-American feeling? Have they really neutralised the threat from Al-Qaeda? What's the right thing to happen? And what does the future hold for Syria, a year on from the start of anti-government protests, which have led to the deaths of more than 8,000 people? What's the right response from the UN to the terrible campaign of violence, murder and torture there? Despite the ceasefire that's been declared over the Gaza Strip, um, after days of Palestinian rocket attacks and Israeli bombings in retaliation, what is going to really resolve the ingrained hatred between these nations? Closer to home, how shall we respond to the news that Tony Nicklinson, uh, who has locked in syndrome, is to be given a high court hearing which could establish his right to die? What's the right outcome in this sad and difficult situation? And could it lead to legalised murder? For some of these questions, you will no doubt have strong opinions based on what you consider to be right. For others, you may not have a clear sense of what should be done. As Christians, uh, we're to be led by considerations that are distinct from what our instincts and our reasoning might suggest. As our reading from Ephesians tells us today, we are to be made new in the attitude of our minds and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. This has implications for how we view our lives as our thinking becomes more sensitised to what pleases God and how we see other people as we recognise more clearly that they have innate value and deserve respect no matter how different they are to us. Today, let's allow God's way of thinking about the value of human life impact how we pray about the troubled places and people in the world. See you tomorrow. Bye.